Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Misty Mitchell, and I am the Director of Conservation Programs for the Johnny Morris Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. And I welcome you to Mission Conservation. We have a great 30 minutes here. We're gonna be talking about fishing. Does everybody love to go fishing? I love to go fishing. It's one of my favorite pastimes, and we hope that you will get outdoors and love to go fishing too. Wonders of Wildlife is a museum and aquarium in Springfield, Missouri. We have 35,000 live animals, including lots of fish. Some of those that you do fish and some that are not. Uh, we have 800 species with 350,000 square feet of exhibits. We pretty much take you all over the world into Africa and the Arctic, under the ocean, and all through our aquatic environments. A pretty amazing aquarium. If you're ever in the Springfield, Missouri area, make sure you check it out. Well, this week on Mission Conservation, we are celebrating National Go Fishing Day, which is June 18th. That is Thursday. And what does that mean? That means get outdoors, go fishing. That's pretty easy, right? We also, last week, we celebrated National Fishing and Boating Week. So you got two fishing events that are right here. So we are celebrating with another mission conservation mission. And these missions are educational gaming platforms, very similar to Pokemon Go. And they allow you to have lots of fun, get out and get engaged. And I'm going to introduce Mary Clark from Agents of Discovery to tell you more about the app. Well, thank you so much, Missy. And we are so excited to be partnering with you on this initiative. Agents of Discovery allows educators to turn their content, as you said, into Pokemon Go style games. And I think one of the really fun things about mission conservation is that once you have your triggers printed, you can play a different mission every week. And that just makes it so cool because the games are different. You This week is let's go fishing, uh, you know, and so that that is the idea. This is this is technology that kids want to use that is fun and engaging, uses augmented reality, gets them moving out of doors. It's just all about having fun and learning at home. Yes, that's exactly right. And right now, people are looking for things to do with their families at home. A lot of them are still in sheltered in situations where they need to stay at home for their safety. So this is an important opportunity for families to get involved in conservation at home at their own pace and at their own leisure. So mission conservation, it's really easy to get involved with. All you need is a cell phone or a device um, and you're gonna download the app uh, Agents of Discovery app. It's available on the App Store or Google Play. And then from there, you're going to open up the Mission Conservation website. Uh, you're going to print your triggers. Now, we highly recommend that you print these triggers, and here's why. These triggers can be reused every single week, just like Mary said. In other words, one week, this week, it's going to be all about fishing. But next week, it's going to be about pollinators. And so we have lots of missions available, even though it's just, uh, we can, so we're going to print your wildlife triggers. And then you're going to unlock all the fun that there is. Augmented reality gaming really engages those kids, gets them up and gets them active. We also include a let's go fishing activity guide. So once your kids get done with these missions, they can open up the activity guide. We have crafts in our activity guide and we have basic knowledge that helps you get involved in other activities related to fishing. So we have two missions that are available. Those missions are emerging learner and an advanced learner. And then once you complete these missions, you're gonna learn fish biology, you're gonna learn aquatic ecology and you're gonna learn about conservation. Then you get to unlock your rewards. You're going to earn a large mouth bass digital badge and then you're also going to earn a Snapchat filter. So those of you that love to share social media, love to have fun, here is your fish social media filter. So you can put this on Snapchat and you can become a little fish swimming under the sea. So it's kind of fun and exciting to be able to do that. Share it with your friends, but that is not it. We now have some prizes that you're gonna be able to pick up soon, working on all the details for those. We have a Just Add Nature 
prize package that we'll be sending out. Um, and so you'll be able to earn that. And in that, you're going to have a net, you're going to have a line, you're going to have the tweezers, and you're going to have bobbers. So this right here is perfect for fishing. The cool thing about fishing is the water is open. Okay. Now you take this opportunity to get outdoors, you're practicing safety, you're practicing social distancing, and you're enjoying quality time with your family. Fishing is a great pastime that relieves stress, allows you to relax, enjoy nature, and just enjoy the outdoors. And it's pretty inexpensive. Now you can spend lots of money on fishing. I have a husband who loves to fish and we spend lots of money, but guess what? You don't have to. Just get you a basic rod and reel, get you some live bait, some worms and crickets, and just go out and have a good time. I promise you, your kids will remember activities like this, okay? So get engaged and do the admission, then take them outside and really learn about fishing. Well, today we have some special guests and we're excited to have them on board with us as part of Mission Conservation. They're an amazing conservation partner with us. We have Julia Luger. She's the Communication and Education Director at Wildlife Forever and manages the Art of Conservation Fish Art Contest where students learn about fish and aquatic conservation through the arts. We also with her have Pat Kanzimus. He's the president of Wildlife Forever, which is a national organization that works to protect fish and wildlife through conservation, education, and habitat restoration. And they are an amazing partner of Wonders of Wildlife National Museum and Aquarium. And we're so glad to have them with us today. Julia, take it over. Thanks, Misty, and thanks everyone for joining us. We're so glad to be here. I also love fishing. We are based in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes, and I've been fishing since I was a little kid. But did you know that fishing has actually been around for 40,000 years? Now it hasn't been since, it hasn't been that long, but since about the 18th century, people started fishing for fun, for recreation. And just like Misty said, fishing is a great way to relieve stress, to get outside and to spend some time with your friends and family. Now let's say you want to get fishing. What do you need? Well, there's a few pieces of basic equipment that'll get you started. The first thing is a fishing license. Now, many states offer free fishing for people who are under 15 years old. So check your state's requirement and then head out to the water. You're also going to need something to catch your fish with. There are a few different types of rods. One basic one is right here. This is called a spin cast rod. It's perfect for beginners. You'll notice that the reel, that's this part, has this nice covering and on the bottom of the reel is actually a button. This is a perfect starter pack and it often comes with built-in tackle. And it's recommended for those who are about six and under. Now, for people like me who are a little bit larger and want a little bit bigger rod, you might want to check out a spinning reel and rod combo. Now on this, the reel is open, so there can be a little bit more challenging, but I am confident as you practice, you'll get better. Now, you need a few things to catch the fish with. You've got your rod and reel, you have your fishing line, now you need a hook. There are lots of different types of fish and they like all different types of things. They live in different types of water. They eat different types of food. So you'll choose what type of fishing equipment you'll need by your fish that you wanna catch. You might use a basic bobber and hook setup. You might have a jig head, which is like a hook, but it's got this cool little piece on the top or if you're feeling fancy, you might even have a built-in swim bait lure. There are a few other pieces of equipment that some people will use. You might use live bait like crickets, minnows, or worms. You might use plastic bait that could look like a worm, it might look like a crayfish, or even some that look like mice. But, and you might have a net and you might have a few pieces to help you unhook your fish once you get it. When you're ready, you got your fish, your fishing rod, you've got your lure, you've got your line, and you're ready to cast. 
Now, I suggest you don't do this inside. It's pretty windy here today in Minnesota, so we didn't want to take you down to the lake. But when you are ready, you're going to take your rod and you're going to feed out between six to 10 inches from the tip, that's what they call the end, down to your lure. When you're ready to cast, if you're using a spinning rod like this, you're gonna take your finger on the line, your pointer finger, and you're gonna hold your rod and reel right here in the middle. This is the stem. You'll notice my fingers are split two and two. If that's comfortable to you, that's great. Some people hold theirs a little bit further back. Some hold theirs further in front. For me, I like it right down the middle. I'm gonna use my pointer finger and grasp the line because when I open the bale here, that's gonna release my line. My finger is holding the line in place so it doesn't fall out at once, leaving my lure right at my feet. I'm gonna open up that bale and to do an overhead cast, I'm gonna swing the rod behind my shoulder and forward it goes. Good luck practicing and have fun on the water. I'm gonna pass it over to Pat Penzinius. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're really happy to be here to try to teach you a little bit more about fishing. Now, you just learned about the type of equipment and the different things that you can use to catch fish. Most importantly, go to BassProShops.com. That's where you can check out all sorts of fishing gear and equipment and clothing uh, to get you set up for your next adventure. Also really important that everybody learns about fishing and why it's important because it supports conservation. And when you buy your license or when you buy tackle and equipment, it helps fund our state agencies and our DNR and resource professionals to fund the work to make the great outdoors even better because we wanna pass that on to the next generation. So conservation is key. And another very important conservation message that we wanna share with you and some of the things that we work on here at Wildlife Forever are invasive species. And invasive species are one of the greatest threats to our outdoors because they take away habitat, they reduce game fish populations, and they really cause a whole host of problems. And we don't wanna be part of the problem spreading those. So we wanna prevent the spread and clean, drain, dry your boats, your equipment, your boots, all of your gear to make sure you're not spreading invasive species to that next area. So invasive species, let's make sure we stop their spread, practice the clean, drain, dry steps, but also another really fun way for you to learn about fish and fishing is through the arts. And at Wildlife Forever, we have a wonderful art program for those who love to draw, who love to have fun creating their own artwork. We have the State Fish Art Contest. And State Fish Art is a national, international art contest where you can draw your state fish or your favorite fish and enter in for all sorts of prizes and awards and have a really great time with that. There's you can check out the website at statefishart.org where there's entry forms, there's lesson plans, there's a whole host of resources and tools to help you learn about fish, fishing, and your state fish. So check out statefishart.org. And also remember that clean, drain, dry message that's so important that we protect the future of our outdoor heritage. So thank you so much, and we'll take any questions. Thank you, Pat. And we, the State Fish Art Contest is an amazing program. Wonders of Wildlife is actually the home of the Missouri State Fish Art. And we've been working with Wildlife Forever for the past two to three years doing that program. We've really enjoyed being part of that. And the artwork that is received is amazing. Um, as a national judge this year, I got to see some of the national artwork. And I was so impressed because I can tell you, I can't uh, paint and draw like they can. So we have a question for you, Pat and Julia. They want to know what is your favorite fish to fish for? Well, my favorite fish is the walleye. Here in Minnesota, the walleye is our state fish. And it's a wonderful fish. It can you can catch from little to all the way to 30, 35 inches. So it's a wonderful, fun fish. Julia, what's your favorite? Yeah, that's a good question. Walleye is definitely a favorite, but I got to spend two summers up in Alaska. So I have a fondness for the halibut. It's not a very beautiful fish. It's flat and its eyes are on top of its head and reeling it in isn't extremely fun. People say it's kind of like reeling in a barn door, but they are beautiful in my opinion, once you get them up to the surface. 
Great, that's awesome. All right, so we have another question is, so how do you determine what bait to use? Well, there's a lot of different ways that you can determine that bait. First of all, you can check out different resources on uh, Wonders of Wildlife website. They have resources about fishing there, but also uh, your regulation books will tell you what types of fish prefer different types of bait. So a little jig like this would be great for panfish, crappies, bluegill, those type of fish. And a little bit of a night crawler or a piece of worm on that lure would really, would really help you catch a lot of fish. And a bigger type of bait like this is ideal for bass and northern pike and some of those larger predatory fish where they like to have a little bit more of a meal to eat. And another really important message to learn when you do start catching those fish is catch and release and keep only what you plan to eat and uh, make sure that you're putting those fish back so they can grow and others can enjoy them as well. Right, and that is a great way for everybody to get involved in conservation is the catch and release and also to make sure that we clean up after ourselves. One of the things I do with my family is anytime we're out in the rivers or the lakes, we're always taking a trash bag with us and picking up the trash that others have left behind because we definitely don't want our animals to get tangled in those um, lines and other things that are out there. And that's super important. All right, so we had, do have another question. Are you ready for this question? All right, so our next question is, um, where do you like, to, what is your favorite area to go fishing at? Julia mentioned um, she loves to go to the Alaska area to fish, but are there other areas you like to fish? Oh, I love fishing all over the country. And in fact, some of my favorite places are down in Venice, Louisiana, fishing for big redfish, but also even some of the small streams that people might find in their own backyard. You don't have to necessarily go far to find a really great spot to go fishing. Some of the smallest streams are, are so quiet and you can see the fish and you're fishing moving water. Uh, so sometimes I enjoy just the local trout stream uh, where you can really connect with nature and you don't have to catch the biggest, you don't have to catch the most, but sometimes even those little fish are really special and, and uh, just a great way to connect with the outdoors. Would you have any advice if you were gonna be taking your family out for the first time with young children, what would your advice be? You know, I'm gonna throw this one right back over to Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Yeah, I love fishing and I actually worked for a summer nannying two boys, three and five, and that was their first time fishing. And my advice, is bring sun protection, prepare for the weather, bring lots of snacks, because that makes everyone happy, and be prepared to have fun. My, when I was first uh, teaching the boys about fishing, they had no clue what to do. We had, you know, hooks everywhere, so we started with safety and we got them confident with catching fish and then confident with releasing. So take your time, have fun, and yeah, prepare for whatever the water throws at you. That's awesome. Thank you guys very much. Uh, we are so oh, glad to have- question, One more question. Oh, here is, someone is asking, does every state have its own state fish? Yes. They do, and some states actually have more than one. So there are more than 50 different state fish. Some will have a game fish, some have freshwater and saltwater. Um, so it's really fun. And you can actually see the entire list of state fish species on our website, statefishart.org. That's awesome, thank you much. much. All right, so thank you guys very much, Wildlife Forever. What a great conservation partner. Um, very much protecting our wildlife, um, whether it be fish or wildlife, that's so important to them. We're so glad to have them as a partner. The key is it doesn't cost a lot. It takes very minimal equipment to get your family outdoors and enjoying and just relax and have fun. You know, it's not really about what you catch. Talked about, Pat talked about not catching the biggest. That's okay. Just having fun and getting those kids outdoors. And by playing the mission, let's go fishing. You're going to learn more about aquatic ecology, fish biology, and conservation. And they're going to give you pointers on what kind of equipment that you need to go fishing. So you'll get your kids started in learning and then take them outdoors and enjoy. You know, it's a great opportunity to get outdoors. The weather is amazing. So make sure you do that. So 
really enjoy, have fun. Next week, we are going to have pollinators. So we'll be moving from let's get fishing to pollinators and learning about all of those uh, animals that help us pollinate. So we will have our crops and our flowers and all the things that are super important to us. So thank you guys very much. Mary, thank you for joining us and having us today um, as part of Mission Conservation. Yes, thank you, Misty. Have fun, everyone, doing your mission. <laughs> Love those prizes. <laughs>